Good morning, y'all. I'm in my herb garden and I wanted to bring you in to show you one of the spaghetti squash volunteers that we have growing here. A volunteer in the garden world is just any plant that you didn't intentionally grow. Volunteers can often occur in organically um, sustained gardens because we're composting. And so even though ideally you're running a hot compost that kills off any seeds, oftentimes if you're doing an animal run compost like vermicomposting, which is typically what I do, it doesn't generate that much heat and so um, sometimes you'd get volunteers. And so a volunteer spaghetti squashes here. Now these guys did get um, hit pretty hard from squash vine borer earlier in the season. But as you can see, a healthy plant with living soil can survive a whole bunch, you know? And so the squash vine borer leaves these tiny little um, eggs on the stem. The larva hatches out of that, burrows into the stem, and eats the plant from the inside out. It's, you know, pretty impressive what these plants can tolerate. But this guy has survived. The squash vine borer have now kind of left this area for the season, and this guy is finally starting to take off. Now, whether or not he'll actually make in time um, may not happen. It's Texas. We're starting to get that cooler weather. But there's a chance and the best thing you can do if you have a volunteer and you're really trying to work against the daylight hours and the days to maturity is to aggressively prune off any fruit that is not going to set. And so before, um, real quick, the most all squash actually have female and male flowers. This straight one right here is a male. The male flower will come out first and it contains the pollen. The um, inside of the flower actually looks different. Unfortunately, I don't have an open female to show you, but I can show you this male. That is what you're looking for. You're looking for that stamen and that pollen. That pollen is what's going to be able to pollinate the female plant and allow that plant to set fruit. Now, here on this plant, I've got a couple of fruits that were incompletely pollinated. And so I'm gonna go ahead and remove them because the plant wants to grow. And so it's gonna put its energy into a fruit that's not gonna make and sacrifice um, fruit that had been pollinated and could potentially make in time. So I wanna show you what that looks like and how you can tell. Right here, we have a successfully pollinated female flower that has this spaghetti squash that is already starting to bulb out. And right below it, do you see that yellow flower? Do you see? Sorry guys, let me get in. Do you see this guy? How he is kind of, um, he's already falling off. Here, perfect. Um, you can tell that he's squishy, he's soft, his color is not, you know, dark green all throughout. This is a sign of an incomplete pollination. Since this guy is not gonna make, I'm pulling him off so that my plant can redirect all of its energy into this one that potentially could make um, if we get lucky. It's Texas, so we are predicted to have a November 6th frost date of this year, a little bit earlier than in years past, but again, Texas, you never know. I hope that that helps explain a little bit about volunteers, how squash plants pollinate, what to look for, and how to prune your plants so that if you're at the end of season, you can get that last remaining crop out of your plant before the weather expires. I hope that helps and that you're doing well. Bye, y'all.